Hello, hope you're having a great spring so far. We're having a great time here at Zoom Events. Another month, another uh, great handful of releases. We'll go through the top few. As always, be sure to check out support.zoom.com for the latest uh, release notes. We'll talk about that again later. Number one uh, release this month. We are so excited to release persistent recurring session events. This is an incredibly popular uh, event type, the recurring session event type. And while there still is a 60 session limit, uh, we have lifted this limit when sessions uh, conclude. So as you have, maybe you have a weekly or a daily uh, demo or a daily event of some sort, uh, it used to be you could only do 60 total in that run, but we have lifted that limit. So as sessions conclude, you can now go in and add more sessions to the end. So this it makes this uh, event type even more powerful. Uh, like for me, I run a regular office hours a few times a month. You're invited to come and participate in that if you'd like. Uh, but now I don't have to stand up a new link uh, every year. Makes this, uh, makes this really, really popular. One session out, one session in. We've made a small but mighty change here, uh, usability enhancement. We've removed the aspect ratio constraints uh, that used to govern how logos were added. Uh, the height remains 56 uh, pixels, but now we accept sort of any aspect ratios, uh, prevents anyone from having to go and uh, manipulate their logos in any way. We know everybody's logo looks a little bit different. Some are square, some are rectangle, so on and so forth. So should be a little bit easier, more of an invisible change, but uh, wanted to draw your attention to it. A lovely new facelift feature for the Content Hub has come out. We have added additional options to customize the hero section, that large section up at the top for your Content Hub. Let's take a look real quick at what these different options are. We have uh, left in place the option for classic. This is the, the classic look where the image sits on top with some fill, um, generated code, you know, code gradient there, and then all of your description and social links down below. But what we have added are fit and fill. Let's take a look at that. Fit, here's Fit. Fit preserves your uh, entire image there. So if you really want uh, to display wording or text or really just want to make sure that everybody gets that, that's there. But you can see that the title, description, and social links have been brought up um, onto that image. And then let's look now at Phil. There's Phil. Phil looks great, I think. That image now goes all the way to the width of the browser. Um, I think that's a really nice, cohesive look. And some early testing with customers this past week, we all agreed that uh, if you're gonna use the fill image, that maybe some more abstract uh, images would work really well. And I'd encourage you, if you have trouble figuring out what that might be, uh, jump into a Zoom doc. Use AI Companion to even generate some uh, prompts. Bring it back over to Zoom events and uh, use our AI image generator here. It might be a really nice way of creating some nice looks like a warm event lounge that says Demo Hub right in the middle of it. So more customizations options for the hub will be coming uh, this summer as well. So stay tuned for those. Next up, Production Studio continues to grow in, po in uh, popularity, very popular tool. And if you haven't heard about it, Production Studio is our Zoom powered video switcher built right into your uh, Zoom client for running your webinars. It's, it's really, really nice. You can build up to 50 scenes ahead of time, different layouts, different wallpapers, different borders, things like that. And then once the webinar is live, you have a uh, video switcher built right in to uh, fire those looks at the right moments throughout your show. A uh, great way to build uh, great looking content, uh, not just even for a live event. We have people that are even doing, you know, podcast uh, recordings, that type of content um, with a, a webinar, record it real nice, bring it over maybe to your, to your video channels that live on your hub, something like that. Uh, I talked to one customer who publishes a regular update from their CEO and they just put up a single nice looking little scene with nice name tags and it's a great way to quickly produce content that looks uh, looks really, really nice and easy. So the change this month is that in Scene Builder, uh, there are some limits. 50 scenes per session and 20 wallpapers can come into play. And uh, it used to be a little bit inconvenient to delete wallpapers, but we've added an X right into the builder. So super simple now to make those uh, changes and build the scenes that you want. Next up, this is a uh, great news for customers who have multiple event licenses. A lot of customers like to mix and match. They have some uh, pick, uh, unlimited licenses, some PPA licenses, and um, you always could go from uh, unlimited to PPA. And what we've changed this month is the ability to go from PPA license hubs uh, back over to unlimited. So we've really just uh, opened up a ton of flexibility so that you can pick the right license, the right hub to host your event 
um, whenever it comes up. Usually this is in the category of needing to increase or decrease event capacity, uh, but it also could just be to put the right event in the right hub and stay nice and organized. So lots of flexibility, great value add. Uh, would strongly encourage you to check out both, uh, both event license types. One nice uh, quick change for email management is the addition of visibility and control over which emails include the actual calendar attachment. So let's take a look at how this looks. You can see a little icon there and then jump into an email and I can toggle on the actual uh, calendar attachment to this email, the confirmation email, that's a good one to add it to. And then right there in the email list, I can see all, uh, all emails that include the calendar. We have more uh, enhancements coming to email and calendar management in the future as well, but this should make things just a little bit easier to make sure your attendees have what they need uh, when they need it. Hope you, hope you enjoy that feature. Two exciting things coming for our video CMS product. You're going to be hearing more and more about that as the year goes. If you haven't had a chance, go over to our hub and check out introducing video CMS to get a concept of what all is possible with that. But what we've added this month is a new homepage for video management. This is now your daily go-to spot for uploading, publishing, building playlists, um, even um, checking out quick metrics there. I can see uh, what videos are performing well. How many views do I have over the past 37 days? A little quick hit, um, quick hit metrics that give me confidence uh, of what is happening on my hub at all times. So super exciting stuff there. Be sure to check it out. That's in everybody's uh, account today. Next up, also for on-demand video content, we have added comments and reactions. This is such an exciting uh, concept for us. We're going to be bringing more and more engagement features for not just uh, during the live event, but now for on-demand video uh, watching after the fact. So this is one of the new features there, but threaded comments are there along with emoji reactions. Super great way to uh, keep the conversation going with your audience, uh, even if they're just watching your on-demand content. So uh, very soon that homepage will include the ability to, to manage all those comments as well. Now I'm super excited. We're going to introduce a new section to these product release videos, throwbacks. We all love throwback features. So each month we're going to go back through the few years of history. We've released uh, hundreds and hundreds of features. And I just want to take a second and draw our attention to uh, maybe some things that we've, we've released before, but we haven't uh, called enough attention to recently. So this month we'll just look at two. First throwback feature this month is bulk update speaker information. I love this feature. I build a lot of events out and this came out sometime in the fall last year and it allows you to quickly select and update information for multiple speakers all in one quick step. So let's do that here. I have a bunch of speakers. They're all from my fake company. Company. Maybe I want to update their logo, their company name or their social links, anything like that. I can update all of that right there. And as you can see, it's very fast, speeds things up and uh, reduces duplicate work. So last feature for this month, another throwback feature is to notify attendees when your session date and time changes a lot of this comes up a lot how do we keep everybody up to date so let's take a look at what that looks like for a single session though this also works in recurring as well so as you change the time we now give you a little option and i strongly encourage you to take advantage of this option to send a fresh email about the date and time to your attendees we let you put a little message in there and off goes a fresh email with a fresh calendar uh, module there ready to go. So always keeping people um, up to date with the latest time and uh, times and dates of your event. Things do change in the event world. That's probably why we all like it so much. So thank you for your time and attention. What a great April this was. Strongly encourage you check out the Zoom Events Hub. A lot of new events coming up in May. And as always, you're invited to office hours or to any of our regular trainings that we have there. Thank you again for being a Zoom Events or Sessions customer. We'll see you next month. Thank you.